Happy draft day. Welcome to the final one before the actual draft, as Alex has it on the scroll bar or whatever you call it. What, what even is it called, Alex, at the bottom? I'd say like the banner. Um, yeah, I'd, the banner on the bottom. The scroll banner. Yeah. Yeah, the scroll banner. As the scroll banner says, happy draft day to everyone celebrating this national holiday on Thursday. And we have a draft coming up the first round tonight. Alex and I will be together. We've mentioned this a few times, but it is very exciting stuff. And it's very exciting stuff here because we have our final mock draft, the 4.0, before the, the actual thing commences tonight. And uh, we'll make sure to let you know on the next episode of the Giant Take Podcast, probably coming out tomorrow, right? So uh, coming out tomorrow, we'll let you know which first round mock draft was the closest. Hopefully it's this one. I would think it would be because this one's the closest to the actual thing. But we'll have to wait and see. Obviously, nothing's a guarantee. But first of all, on this uh, gloomy, by the way, gloomy Thursday in, in Jersey, like not draft weather, not what I expected. Um not what I would have liked at the end of April going into May. But Alex, even though it is a gloomy Thursday, how are you doing today? I'm doing well. I mean, I'm nervous. It feels like this day's taken forever. 8 p.m. feels like 10 hours away. Actually, it is pretty close to 10 hours away now. But uh, um, yeah, it feels a long time away. The day's been going by slowly, but uh, soon everything will be slowing down and then it'll all heat up again at 8 o'clock. Um, and I'm just really excited for the Giants pick here. And honestly, you know, not just the Giants, right? It's fun seeing everything, especially those first 10 picks. There's always a surprise thrown in there. Uh, so that's always a fun part of the draft. But um, besides that, I don't really have anything else to say. Um, you know, we'll just get right into the draft here. Um, I guess Josh will do the uh, the odd numbers and I'll do the even numbers, if that makes any sense. So he'll start at number one, and then I will do number two. Uh, so, Josh, get right into it. If anyone knows how numbers work, Alex, it is pretty self-explanatory that I have the odds and you have the evens. So, first pick, I think there's no question about it. Trevor Lawrence, these are always, like, the three that are, you know, the slowest. Like, we already know who's going to get picked here. It's kind of obvious. Um, so, Trevor Lawrence goes number one, obviously. And then we're going to have the Jets pick at number two, Alex. You got that. And then number three, obviously, is a little toss-up. So, we'll get to that in a minute. So Justin Fields, num uh, I mean, Zach Wilson, number two, not Justin Fields, number two. Uh, obviously, cause something different kind of from when we last, um, you know, did our mocks is that Justin Fields has been falling. I don't know why it's taking so long to draft here. But, uh, yeah, it, definitely an interesting thing there. But Josh will get into that with this next pick. Well, Alex, they're, they're, they're taking their time like tonight, right? We always go into these mock drafts and it takes 30 seconds for us to do it. And then, you know the whatever how I'm, i think it's like five minutes on the clock for each team whenever that happens and always feels like it's 10 hours for each pick so you know we're gonna have to wait that hour until the giants pick at 11 anyway san francisco 49ers the rumors have come out or the i guess the sources have said trey lance or mac jones who's it gonna be well the kid from north dakota state the quarterback that has not played against the big teams that alabama has played against although it seems like they break them every single time that Alabama team. We're going with Trey Lance out of North Dakota State uh, at number three to the San Francisco 49ers. A little bit better player of Mac Jones has been able to prove himself a little bit more, I feel like, than Mac Jones and Alex is four. So again, here you could see a quarterback, but here uh, we're going probably with the most talented player in this draft, and that's going to be Kyle Pitts to Atlanta. Um, you know, I think this is just a really good pick for them. Um, you know, it's not exactly ideal. They're in an awkward spot with Matt Ryan there, but maybe he gets a couple more good years and Kyle Pitts fits there very nicely and will make their offense quite good next season. Five Bengals, right? We I talked about it with JQ. If you did not check it out, it's on the IGTV, whatever it's called, the uh, live stream that we did yesterday with uh, JQ talking Big Blue with JQ. Um, we talked about this pick. There's a fun pick, and then there's a pick for the big future end of things, and Alex already has it pulled up. Penny Sewell or Jamar Chase. We're going to go with the fun decision here, obviously the, re uh, the reuniting of the both LSU wide receiver Jamar Chase and LSU quarterback Joe Burrow. There you go at number five to the Bengals. Yep. So now Miami's kind of stuck in a weird situation, right? You know, they're definitely interested in Jamar Chase, but he's off the board. So they look, who's the best player available? And that's Penny Sewell. They just got rid of Eric Flowers. Um, and Sewell, obviously, they play, he plays tackle. Flowers was in the guard position, but still nice 
for that offensive line depth. And they also lost Isaiah Wilson with his issues, uh, it, who was their first round tackle last season. So uh, a nice pick there for the Dolphins. They're taking their time. They're really thinking it over, but that's what they're going to do. <laughs> we go on to uh, the Detroit Lions at seven. I think they select Jalen Waddle out of Alabama, or at least we think that. And uh, that'll hopefully be the case tonight. So we look good. Uh, it, it looks like their top need. That, that's what PFF says, and we agree with that. So Waddle at seven. So at eight now, um, the Panthers for the past couple mock drafts, we've kind of had the same thing, and we're going to continue with that pick. Obviously, Sewell's off the board, so they need a tackle. I mean, PFF doesn't seem to think so, but they do uh, to protect Sam Darnold. They just got rid of Teddy Bridgewater, uh, so maybe a quarterback, but probably not. Um, Rashawn Slater is the pick here, um, and he will help protect Sam Darnold as he tries to get a fresh start in Carolina. Um, but definitely, they're going to have to take a while to think about it, actually, in real life, because there definitely are some good options on the board for them. Uh, well, Alex, you're saying at number eight with the Panthers, just at a tackle in general, right? Because we had so well, I remember falling to them last time. Yeah. Okay, right. So just, yeah. I mean, just to tackle in general, obviously, uh, for the Panthers there. But let's go to the next pick, and that's going to be the Denver Broncos, Micah Parsons. This one's a little bit different. We haven't done that in, in a while. Micah Parsons going uh, to the Denver Broncos. I want him for the Chines so badly, but linebacker from Penn State goes here at nine. Yeah, and obviously with the Teddy Bridgewater trade there, uh, QB's more likely off the board for Denver. Um, you know, there's definitely some mocks that still have them going QB, but we do not have that. Cowboys, they pretty much go with the same guy every time. I mean, we I think we might have had J.C. Horn in the past once, but Patrick Sertain, I think he's the best corner in the class, and I think the Cowboys will snatch him right up if he's there at number 10. Most likely the best defensive player in the class. Uh, you know, the Broncos could snatch him up as well uh, at number nine, but I think Parsons is a better fit, uh, like Josh mentioned. And this leads to what we've been seeing now in ESPN reported it this morning. Giants targeting one of the two wide receivers in Jalen Waddle or Devontae Smith. Well, who's on the board right now? That's Devontae Smith out of Alabama. We're going to have the Giants picking him at number 11. So now we have the Eagles. Um, if you look at them, you know, they're they're an interesting. I mean, we could go down here. Uh, you know, maybe they pick another quarterback. Maybe they pick, you know, Ian Book. Um, but uh, no, they're going to go cornerback. That joke really didn't land at all. Um, we're, they're going to go cornerback. J.C. Horn um, out of South Carolina. Another player that the Giants have been rumored to be interested in. Uh, good value here for the Eagles. I don't know why they have them ranked at uh, 18 here, but a nice pick for the Eagles. It is a good pick for the Eagles, and I think what is, what is another good pick, Alex, and that is going to be the New England Patriots here. Uh, why is that? Well, Patriots don't pick at 13, right? But the Los Angeles Chargers are going to make a trade with them because this player is still on the board, and this player is a player in Justin Fields. Uh, you know, I, I talked about on the live stream as well with JQ. Sorry, I'm plugging it again, but... For some reason, Justin Fields has slept on, and I feel like Mac Jones is higher than him and a lot of other players as well. We have Mac Jones falling a little deep here, but I think Fields needs to go higher. He carried Ohio State, really, uh, to that national championship or at least helped them get there, so I like that they make this trade here. It's only two spots, but maybe like the Bears can trade up and try and get him or something like that, and that leads to this Vikings pick. So for the Vikings, you're looking at a number of positions. Quiddy Pay has been mocked there quite a few times by us, but this time we're going to change it up a little bit. Vera Tucker's been flying up draft boards uh, for a lot of teams, uh, according to a lot of the uh, beat reporters. Uh, the Vikings are definitely a team that's interested in him, in him um, and Vera Tucker here will go 14. Um, maybe someone the Chargers would have liked, but they have another player that they'll uh, be interested in here at 15. So that's 15, like you said, Chargers slotting to this spot, and that's going to be Christian Derisaw out of Virginia Tech. I mean, it, it's an interesting selection, but I wouldn't say too interesting. Obviously, they're still able to get their guy. I feel like we've had them going to the Chargers before, so they're just able to slot to 15 and still get it done there. Yeah, um, you know, definitely, I'd say probably the third best tackle on the board. I mean, if you count Farrah Tucker as a tackle, obviously many have him mocked as a guard in the NFL. Um, here we go with the Cardinals. This is interesting. We've had Farley here a lot, J.C. Horn, if, you know, he fell a lot. 
Caleb Farley, obviously, there's been so many things about his injury issues. He got COVID the other uh, yesterday. Uh, but for us, we're going to have him falling out of the top 20. Uh, and we're going to have Greg Newsom coming up. Uh, and he'll be the pick for the Cardinals, lo uh, losing Patrick Peterson. It's a nice fit there for them. Another good fit, Alex, is probably this pick for the Los, Ange the Los Angeles Raiders. I'm switching them completely. They go from Oakland to Las Vegas to Los Angeles now. Las Vegas Raiders. Uh, another good fit, I think, is safety Trevon Morig. I really hope I'm saying that right. I feel like we've always struggled with this name. Safety out of TCU. Um, you got to hope he produces for the Raiders. I was looking, maybe like the Raiders go quarterback. I, I proposed that to Alex with Mac Jones still being on the board, but he's like, Derek Carr produced for them well this past year, and I think Gruden really likes him. So we go with the safety out of TCU. So here for Miami, you could look wide receiver. Bateman's still on the board. It may be a little early in their eyes, and there's definitely some good wide receivers as you get into the later rounds. So I think here they go best player available, and that's Christian Barmore, a uh, beast out of Alabama. I think he'll be very good. They definitely need some interior help on that defensive line, and he's a very good fit there. Uh, so Christian Barmore, 18 to the Dolphins. And then 19, the Washington football team. We've had them trading up before, but guess what? This pick is still available at number 19 in this draft, and that's Mac Jones, quarterback out of Alabama. Obviously, even though he's played against, you know, not the best competition with all their weapons at wide receiver, he's still one of the top five wire, or quarterbacks, excuse me, in this draft class. So I think we need to value that. And obviously, it's not going to drop into the second round or anything like that, but Right in front of the Bears, the Washington football team is able to scoop him up. Yeah, sitting behind Miss, uh, Fitzmagic maybe for a year, and then hopefully he will get his start. Or I mean, not hopefully, because obviously they're division rivals of ours. Um, for the Bears here, uh, they're probably bummed that Mac Jones didn't fall to them. Uh, they could possibly trade up in real life, but I doubt it. Um, they have QB Andy Dalton. They want to protect him. Bateman's on the board, which would be very enticing for them. But I think what they would have to do, they'd have to be smart. They'd have to go to the tackles, um, and they'd have to take Tevin Jenkins. Uh, and I think that's just a really good pick for them. Uh, you know, this is definitely a weird spot uh, for, you know, what the uh, Bears could take. But I think Jenkins is a nice fit for the Bears. And we've had him mock there for a while, too, as well. The next two picks, Alex, wide receiver, wide receiver, top needs for the Colts, top needs for the Titans, and wide receivers do go back to back to both teams. I'll start out with the first one. The Colts select wide receiver Rashad Bateman out of Minnesota. Rank 17 here goes 21. I think it's a good value for the Colts there, and I think he could go even earlier if some teams want to do that. But you can go with the other wide receiver now for the Titans. So now, obviously, Bateman's off the board, and now it's kind of you know a pick of a dozen here of who's the next uh, wide receiver off the board. You got the big three, I feel like. Then you got Bateman, and then you're kind of looking, and you're looking at the Moors. Uh, the Terrence Marshall, uh, Kadarius Tony, even Diami Brown, more of a second round guy there. But I think Elijah Moore um, is going to be the first wide receiver out of this kind of like early second round, late first round bunch of wide receivers. Uh, and I think he will be a really nice fit there for the Cardinals uh, along, or not the Cardinals, the Titans alongside AJ Brown. And that kind of pains me because I really wish Elijah Moore could fall to our 42nd pick. It's kind of like me thinking Kyle Pitts could fall to 11, right? Obviously, this one's even worse because he's picked 20 picks before the Giants compared to Pitts is only like six or seven. But let's go to the Jets pick at 23. Obviously, they got their quarterback and Zach Wilson for the future. Let's see if they can get their corner back for the future, their CB. That's going to be Caleb Farley out of Virginia Tech. There's been rumors that he is falling down draft boards because of the injury troubles. But you know what? I think 23 is pretty good value for him, and he'll go there to the Jets. Yeah, really nice value for the Jets. Definitely a team that could take a chance on him because they have those two first-round picks. Um, and now with the Steelers, we're going to have the same player again. Rumors have been heating up again today about Najee Harris and his connection with the Steelers. I think Najee Harris to the Steelers at this point is a very good uh, prediction, and he will be uh, you know, replacing their uh, James Conner. So that's a really nice piece for them in that offense. Maybe their running game could be a little bit, oh, my God, uh, experiencing some technical issues real quick. Let's see what, you know, what happens. All right, so we're back now after the technical difficulty there. We're on PFN now, so hopefully we should be all in the clear. Um, so we'll start with pick 25 again, or restart with pick 25. Uh, so the Jaguars, um, so they're with their second first-round pick here, uh, and we're going to go tackle here. 
Uh, and we're going to go Sam Cosme out of Texas. So let's move on to number 26. Alex flipping the order a little bit now. I get evens to end it out. I'm going to go Cleveland Browns. Uh, and they're going to take linebacker Jeremiah owusu koromoa And I think it's a really good pick, obviously, at the value here at 26. Linebacker falling. And then, obviously, we're going to have some edges that fall as well. So, um, Alex, go ahead. So, next, Ravens. They need a big receiver, uh, you know, physically tall. But they have Hollywood Brown. He's a little bit short, more of a slot guy. Terrace Marshall, perfect guy for the outside uh, out of LSU for the Ravens. 28. Uh, it's going to be the New Orleans Saints. They take cornerback Asante Samuel Jr. out of Florida State, and that is going to be their pick. Obviously, Eli Apple didn't seem like he solved the issue in New Orleans, so they go with a different cornerback instead. Uh, so next, the uh, Packers, they need a receiver very badly. Um, they have Devontae Adams and no one else. Um, Rondell Moore, <laughs> perfect fit there. He's a nice slot guy um, out of Purdue. And then here's where I mentioned the edges that didn't really go earlier in the draft, like projected by most people, go final three here, all back to back to back. So three in a row. Buffalo Bills, I'll start it off, Alex. Quiddy Pay out of Michigan, the edge, uh, goes here, who's even been rumored to the Giants um, at 11, goes here 30 to the Buffalo Bills. So next here, we have the Ravens again, back on the clock after that uh, Orlando Brown trade. They were probably looking at tackle, um, but if you look at the tackle position, it's kind of bare at this point in the draft, so maybe they can wait. They go edge, Aziz Ojolari out of Georgia. Uh, he's, you know, I, I think probably the best current edge, uh, current edge rusher in this class, um, and I think he's a nice fit there for the Ravens. And now you have for the final three edges on the board, like who you're going to take. You're going to take Russo, you're going to take away. I've never heard of jo Oh, Joseph Osai. Okay, I got it out of Texas. I don't know why they have him so high here on this PFN board, but whatever it is, they're going to go with Jalen Phillips um, out of Miami, and maybe Russo will follow the Giants. That would be nice. But um, So that's going to do it for our mock draft. And, um, I mean, I guess we can wrap it up now. I, I mean, Alex, any final thoughts that you have? I think this is... We'll see. We'll see which one's the best. I'm very interested to see which one. I'm sure we don't get it perfect, but, you know, if we do get it perfect, we should, like, win some money or something. But we'll, we'll find out which mock draft gets the closest to correct, and um, we're excited for the draft. That's that's all I have to say. You know, you'll obviously check Twitter at the Giant Take Pod, follow us, and you'll see our tweets. You'll see our live reactions to everything, and the video of – that'll probably be very funny uh, when we do our video, Alex, of, you know uh, – yeah, our video of um, uh, us reacting. I couldn't even think about it for a second. All right, so that's all for today. Uh, this is our final mock draft. We'll maybe come back tomorrow with a second round mock draft, uh, depending on you know the situation after the first round. Uh, thank you for watching all these mock drafts, and we'll see you next time with another YouTube video.